We're going. Hey there, fellowship. Come on and join the party. Zach Hobbs, first in line. All right. Zach, we're going to let a few other people join. Jennifer Miranda, hey there. It better be good. I hope it's, hope it is. Yes. Wow. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Hey, Dorita. Hey, Kristen. Wow. Well, everybody, I'm going to just tell you that uh, I am thrilled to be together tonight. I am in the Pressler home, Facebook living maybe for the first time in my life, and I am in the kitchen. If you hear that sound, that is a, uh, a sauce or a gravy sautéing. Uh, when you look at me on Sunday mornings and you say, how do you stay so curvy? Well, there's a reason, and it always happens in this kitchen. But first... You can say good evening to two of my boys, my oldest Christian, my youngest Joe. Uh, this, that is their new school house right there, that table as they work, and uh, they are doing great with their stay at home. And there's my beautiful wife, Martha, cooking and... Cooking. Can they see it? Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it's going to be good. It's pork gravy. It's pork gravy. All right. Well, I'm going to go to... Um, what I call the Zoom room, because uh, I have, in the last week and a half, had about 7,000 Zoom calls from there, and uh, I think I will continue to have some. Wow, okay. This is the Zoom room, our home office and game room, and this is what I call my Zoomiform, because I seem to be wearing this with some regularity these days, so. Uh, hey, I am thrilled. Uh, we, uh, we got together as a team yesterday and just talk through what are some different ways that we can connect with uh, with people of fellowship uh, obviously with the challenges of what's going on with the coronavirus and everybody in lockdown uh, praise God for all of these um, you know, all this technology that we have at our disposal so that we can connect and so uh, we had a conversation and said what if we opened it up with uh, just some questions and some time to spend together and see what's going on in everybody's hearts and um, and see what God maybe has to say about that. So now I am thrilled that you are joining us. We've got more people joining. I'm going to say a, an opening prayer and then I'm going to jump into some questions. Uh, I also see that you all are making comments over there. So keep joining. Feel free to make comments. You can ask questions. We've received a lot of questions. Uh, we're going to get to a few tonight. And uh, as we've thought about how to do this going forward, I think what we're going to do is uh, just continue to have moments like these where we're going to uh, tap into some of these questions. You know, some of them kind of ask the same thing. So when we get a few that are asking the same thing, we'll address that. But we're looking forward to tonight. And it's going to last somewhere between five minutes and five hours. You can go down in the comments and uh, you can say which length of time you would prefer, five minutes or five hours, or maybe somewhere in between. So I am going to pray. And, um, and here's something else that I'd love to hear from you. If you are on Zoom and you pray, do you have to bow your head and close your eyes? So that's the, that's the survey question for the night. Can't wait to see what you have to say. I'm going to pray and I'm going to bow my head and close my eyes. Father, you are good. And Lord, we need you. We need you every day, every second. Uh, Lord, but there are moments in time and seasons in our lives where we are reminded that we need you desperately and we praise you lord that you are a god who draws near and that you are a god who is present and faithful uh, and i thank you lord for uh, the technology that you've made possible in the world today so that we can come together as a church family and really just spend some time thinking about what's going on and thinking thoughtfully and biblically about what's happening uh, and maybe encourage each other along the way uh, and to pray for you 
that you would enter into all of this and be with us. So, Lord, we do praise you. I thank you that you are uh, with us and faithful. I pray that you're with us tonight. pray that you would speak to those who are here, particularly those, Lord, who are stirred up and anxious. Uh, and we love you and praise you in the great name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to... I've got two pages of questions here, and I'm going to jump into the first one. And again, if you want to make comments in the comment play, uh, fields, you can. If you want to ask more questions, you can. I may be able to answer tonight. Sometimes uh, I think going forward, we might uh, just grab a few of these and uh, answer them for the next time. So first question is this. What's fellowship doing uh, to serve and to help right now? You uh, maybe saw the... Um, uh, the devotional that Cheryl Reed, our outreach pastor, did a couple of days ago and some of the ideas. I want to update you on a couple specific things that we are doing. We just got word sometime today that we can do a blood drive. Carter Blood Care, I'm sure you've seen them all over the place. They have a mobile unit and they are going to be in our parking lot this Saturday. And that's going to be from nine o'clock to one o'clock. Uh, we've got some registration details coming. I think we were still working on a link uh, when we went live here at seven o'clock. So stay tuned for that. Um, and we'll see if we have that. But uh, Carter uh, has worked with the city to make this possible. We're obviously in kind of the lockdown mode, but, um, but they know how to go about sanitizing and keeping their blood mobile uh, clean for anybody to um, to be able to come by and give blood. The word that I have heard multiple times is desperation, that they are in desperate need for blood. And so uh, I love this. I think it's an immediate way that we can serve Carter. We can serve the people of Dallas. And, um, and there's something about shedding blood for the benefit of the other that uh, seems to fit this time of year. And so stay tuned for that registration. Uh, and I think just keep registering. They may, they may be able to bring more than one uh, bus, van, something. I, I don't know all the details, but uh, I plan on being there and, and giving blood. Uh, I have no idea what my blood type is, so um, probably need to figure that out. Second thing is this, the food drive. Cheryl had announced that in the uh, in her devotional last week, and we were going to do a food drive where you could bring food by the church. That had to be postponed indefinitely because of the order uh, that came down. But what we were able to do today is we wrote a $5,000 check to uh, the Vickery Meadow uh, Food Bank. And that was where the donations were gonna go anyway. And so uh, what they have asked us is just because of how they collect food, they, uh, they said that they can't stand at the door basically and collect food anymore. So we're able to send them cash and then they're able to turn around and turn that into um, you know, food for those who are in need uh, of that and those who will continue to be, I would say, in need and in greater need. And just as we're talking about Vicar Meadow, let's pray for our neighbors to the east. They are, um, some of them are new to this country and uh, they don't know what's going on. And all of a sudden they hear they have to stay, you know, pretty confined. And so there's confusion around that. Uh, we continue to minister over there. So pray that uh, we would love them well. Also pray that we'd have an opportunity uh, to talk to them about Jesus. So uh, you can continue to uh, contribute to the Food bank, you can go to our homepage, our webpage, and do the drop down on giving, and we have an option there now for uh, for donating to that. So that's an option for you uh, going forward. So thanks to those of you who have given. We want to continue to be a really good neighbor and help uh, those folks out in their time of need. Another question that came up is, what are we going to do about Easter? Um, a week and a half ago, I thought, what a great day if the church could come back together for the first time uh, on Easter, on Resurrection Sunday, uh, and all signs point to that not being possible. So we will gather, uh, as we've been gathering the last couple of weeks, and as we will continue to gather over the next several weeks, and uh, we'll do so uh, online. And um, we're excited about that. We're thinking about what some creative things that we can do. Uh, but uh, first and foremost, we are going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And because he lives, uh, we live. And so uh, be praying for that day. Uh, I'm wondering if those who wouldn't normally go to church on Easter Sunday might tune into a church service on Easter Sunday. So you can be in prayer about that. Uh, we are trying to put out our Facebook live feed and put out, um, you know, our streaming online. So I want to encourage you to share that with all of your friends each week because uh, there's a lot of traffic and a lot of people that 
uh, again, wouldn't want to step inside a church building, but uh, because of where we are right now in the history of the world and what's going on, uh, people are sensitized that may be more open to that. So, uh, so we're still working on details and uh, we will let you know. So that's what we're doing to help. And um, that's what's happening with Easter. Got a really, really good question. Uh, my guess is it's a question that a lot of people are having in some way or another. And the question that we got was this, how do I handle all the what if questions biblically? They bring me a lot of anxiety. I, I, I just want to say, if this is what you're asking, it's a really good question. And uh, it's a question that I don't think God sort of shrugs and says that's a silly question to ask. Uh, I will tell you this morning, I woke up at 3.30 and I did not fall back to sleep because I had some what if questions going in my head. And, um, and, and, and I think when we think about these what if questions biblically, uh, where we ultimately land in all that is what's going to have influence and power and control uh, in your life. What's really going to influence your heart. You may know uh, the passage in Matthew six sermon on the Mount. Jesus is just talking about, uh, you know, item after item after item. And in verse 25 of chapter six, he says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. And I think we could read that and go, oh, wow, geez, Jesus, Jesus is going to get mad at us if we have any anxiety in your life. And I really don't think that's what Jesus is saying. From Jesus experienced everything that we experience because he is a man. And, and other than sinning, he had the, the human experience that we have. And so I don't think what Jesus is saying there is, is just being dismissive or, or trying to induce shame and saying, if you have anxiety, uh, shame on you. What I do believe he's trying to say is what is it that you're going to do when anxiety shows up, when those fears show up in our life, when those what if questions uh, show up. And, you know, if you think about where we are right now, I'm sure you guys could come up with a million what if questions. Uh, you know, what if this continues for months and months? What if uh, a whole bunch of people pass away? What if our economy crashes? Um, what if I get sick? What if I lose my job? And, and I, I can't imagine uh, knowing Jesus like I know him, that he would sit here and go, shame on you for thinking of that. I don't think that's what it is. But what you see in uh, Matthew chapter 6 is, uh, I think, some counsel from him to us that when those anxieties show up and those fears and those worries show up, it actually puts us at kind of a fork in the road. And, that the, uh, and, and the question is, which path is our heart going to take? Because if you think about what a what-if question is, it, it is a question of possibilities. It's a question of all the things that might happen, and my guess is for for you, I mean, certainly it is for me, most of the what-if questions I ask are kind of negative, and they're going to arrive at some kind of fearful and negative result, and then they're going to spiral into even more negative and more fearful and more negative and more fearful. And so Jesus, I think, is saying, listen, if you focus on those anxieties, when you have this fork in the road, your heart can go this way. And if your heart goes to the uncertainty, the, the possibility of whatever is causing you anxiety, it's going to own your heart. And if you are owned by fear, if you're owned by anxiety, uh, if you've experienced that, I've experienced that, it can cause you to freeze, it can cause you to sin, it can cause you to lash out, it can cause you to make terrible decisions. And so what I believe Jesus tells us in chapter 6 is this. You have the uncertainty of the issue of anxiety that's causing the anxiety, but there's another path. And that path is not uncertain. That path is not possibilities. That path is certainties. And that path is the character of God. And here's why I believe Jesus is saying, you've got to make that choice. Which path is your heart going to go down? It's because certainty answers uncertainty. The certainty of God's character is the answer for whatever question it is that we have, whatever worry it is that we have. That the more I know about who God is and what his character is, the more I'll be able to arrive at these uncertain times and what, what all the different potentials might be and say, I don't know what that looks like down the road, but what I do know is that the God who is here with me right now is going to be the same God who's with me down the road when that you know, happens to unfold. And I, and I just want you to listen to what Jesus says here in chapter 6. He says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. 
Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Let me say that again. Are you not of more value than they? Remember that question that Jesus asks. The answer is yes. So when those anxieties start to creep in, say, am I not more valuable to God than birds who seem to be fed pretty regularly? The answer is yes. Uh, And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? So Jesus is not shaming us for being anxious. Jesus is saying anxiety, worry, is a waste of time. It won't do anything to benefit your life. In fact, it'll take away from your life. And I think I, I think I preached on that or mentioned that last week, maybe. I, I don't know. Sometime in the last 15 weeks, I, I mentioned that verse. Uh, and why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And and he's saying there, hey, those who who aren't followers of mine, uh, who aren't followers of the one true God, they worry about that stuff. That's not what uh, a follower of the one true God is supposed to worry about. Um, and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. So if you have an anxiety and a fear and a worry of all the things that could possibly go wrong and all the things that you will need in one day from now and 10 days from now and six months from now and five years from now, God right now knows exactly what it is that you need. He's not caught off guard. He's not surprised. God knows exactly what you need. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So um, so I think that's, that's the way that we handle our anxiety biblically. It's all about the certainty of the character of God, that I take the uncertainty of whatever scenarios can happen in my life, and I say, here's who I know God to be. And if you think about even if you think about the Israelites, each and every day God provided manna. Why didn't God provide them a month at a time or a year at a time? It's because they would get content and they would get satisfied and they would kind of sit back and go, okay, we got this. But each and every day, and I think this is ultimately what Jesus is saying here, this is a not only an opportunity to grow your faith, but it's an opportunity for you to know God more deeply, that each and every day they had to wake up and say, what's the character of God? Will he meet us in our need? Uh, and will he provide for us? And God did each and every day faithfully. Now, this passage doesn't say that our outcomes are going to be easy and beautiful and abundant and that we'll all be living in palatial estates, eating pate or whatever you eat in palatial estates. But he is saying that in his will and in his timing, uh, he is going to provide. And so, um, so I hope that encourages you that if you find yourself anxious about what might be in the future, that that you'd recognize that, that you would offer that to God, and that you would apply the certainty of God's character. And the more you see God act in your life, the more you understand his character because you've experienced it, the more you can continue to go back and say, that's who God is. I don't have to worry about this because that's who God is. That's what Israel did. The Old Testament, page after page, has more and more looking back that says, this is who God is. This is who he's shown himself to be. So um, what do I have? Uh, sure, I'll read this to you. Lamentations three twenty-two to 24. This is a great passage to meditate on as you would think, consider uh, the character of God. And so if you don't know the character of God, the best place to start is going in the Bible. But Lamentations three twenty-two to 24. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. What does Jesus say? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's got plenty of worries. You worry about today. And you know what? God's mercies are new today for today's worries. And he'll give you more mercy tomorrow for tomorrow's tomorrow's uh, worries you focus on today because God's with you and he's going to provide for you. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And all of God's people said, amen. Um, Hey, that was fun. Hope that was helpful. Uh, Would love your feedback too, just as you hear things. If you want to ask some, you know, follow-up questions, those kinds of things.
but the next question that we have, have is, is, what do I do if I need help? And we want to make sure that we, to the extent that we can, with all the limitations that we are here to uh, really provide for you, you can call our church's main number. We still have a pastor on call line. There's someone on our staff available 24-7 uh, who will uh, receive that call, uh, call you back if they don't answer the phone, and, and this, whether pray with you, talk through uh, with you, remind you of the certainty of God's character. So I want you to know that's available. Uh, if you have some, if you have a need, if you just find yourself in the moment where you need to talk to someone who uh, who's going to remind you of who Jesus is. Uh, we also have a text in prayer line. I don't know if that's going to show up in the comments. It might. Uh, it's 469-972-7222. So you can text tonight. You can text whenever you want. But uh, but we're still praying uh, for your prayer request. We have created that, a digital list. You know, we have the cards normally that we would pray on Wednesday mornings, but we're continuing to pray for your prayer request. And uh, my email address is kurtp at fellowshipdallas.org, K-U-R-T-P at fellowshipdallas.org. I'd love to connect with you. I'd love to connect you to some people uh, in our church who can help you with whatever you've got going on. So uh, if you have a need, uh, don't be bashful. Raise your hand uh, and help. Uh, let us help you with that. Uh, there's tons of resources spiritually. You know, there's tons of uh, resources in other ways. And I just want to make sure uh, that you know your church is here to be with you through whatever you've got going on uh, going forward. There we go. Okay, text your prayers. If you look at your comments bar, the last uh, or second to last. So we'd love to hear from you. Uh, here was a great question that we got. It said, how do I lead people to Jesus right now when I can't be around them? Uh, I, I love that question. I love that we would think about the potential of this period in, uh, in our history. Uh, we may never have another opportunity like this. I'm going to show a picture. Oh, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a, of a uh, sneak peek on Sunday. There is a picture that I have seen. Uh, it's the Bible section of Walmart, uh, of the Walmart book section, and it's empty as if it, they were selling toilet paper there. And, and what that tells me is that there is a curiosity there maybe is a hunger. Uh, there are people that say, I don't know what's going on, but the world seems like it is about to burn down. And uh, I want to figure out, is there hope? Is anybody thinking about this? Is anybody in control of this? Is there anybody that I can turn to? And, uh, and, and, and I think we all have an opportunity as followers of Jesus to engage people whose hearts may have never been, may never be as soft uh, or have been as soft uh, towards Jesus. And, uh, but we are limited, right? Um, I know Richard uh, Dallas did the uh, shelter in place. Richardson did a shelter in place. Collin County, I think, passed that down. Dallas County passed that down. So, um, you know, so there's some limitations, but guess what? We are connecting with 51 people right now on this, uh, on this Facebook Live. And, and I think uh, there's, there's, I read an article this week that said the lost what did it say? So the lost art of the phone call or, or no, introducing the phone call that because of the way that we're kind of sheltered right now, people are answering their phone. Nobody answers their phone anymore, but people want to have a phone conversation. Uh, you can write letters. Snail mail is the new thing, right? Think about this. We are going backwards in our technology and the way we communicate with snail mail and with actual telephone calls. Um, you can share hope online. Don't be bashful about your faith if you're active on social media. Um, I lost my place. You can meet your neighbors on your daily walk within six feet. Um, it's spring, and spring has sprung this week. It, it was miserable last week but because uh, of the rain. But listen, I, I think there's opportunity to be around. I was jogging yesterday, and I ran by the same people twice. I don't know if they took a shortcut or I took a shortcut, but it was just so fun to see them and, um, and just be out and make yourself available. Some of you that you do that very easily. Others of you go, Oh man, I don't know about that, but, uh, but move towards other people in the way that's comfortable to you. 
And, 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 and the, the hope is there is that you would have the opportunity to just have a conversation with someone. I think that's the kind of the first hope that, that you might shake someone's hand from six feet away without touching and sharing germs. Uh, but there's that incredible reminder to us in first Peter three fifteen. my guess is some of your minds already went to it, right? But in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have his spirit, you have been given new life, and your eternity is secure. The hope is in you. And I think what we need right now is the church to serve and to go into tough places and to do these difficult things. But but I also think the church needs to lift its head up and just say, I'm a person of hope and be very public with that. And, uh, and I think when we do that, it attracts people, right? It brings people in and says, hey, the world's falling apart. Why is it that you are so um, hopeful? You seem to not be overly upset about this or anxious. I mean, obviously, we want to have compassion for people and, and with what's going on. But there is a hope that, that followers of Jesus have that other people will notice. And they're going to say, hey, you know what? I, I want some of that. Can you tell me why it is? that you are the way you are. And there was a question that came on the heels of that. Uh, it says, is it okay for me to laugh at things right now? Is it bad to share funny things? If it is not okay for me to laugh right now, then I have been a terrible citizen the last week and a half. Um, uh, the, the answer is absolutely it is okay to laugh right now. We clearly don't want to be insensitive. Uh, if you're active on social media, you don't want to put out a bunch of stuff that may make light of what's going on. Um, but I have always believed that laughter is the echo of joy, that it is the sound of joy. And, and if you think about this dark time that we're in, how attractive uh, will the world, how attracted will the world be to laugh to the laughter of, of, of people who have that hope. And so, um, yeah, I, I would really encourage you to laugh. We need some laughter. It's a, it's a release valve. Uh, it's a way for us to connect with people. Uh, it's a way for us, I think, to love people. And um, so, yes, laugh. I don't know how I can say that any more plainly than that. And feel good about laughing. It's a total gift from God. Uh, question, how do I pray right now? And here's what I'd love for you to do. If you have um, if you have a prayer request that you, you text it in, great. But if you want to put that in the comment field, I'm going to close tonight with prayer. Um, uh, and if you want me to pray for that right now, I'd love to do that. But, uh, but I, I want to talk about how we as followers of Jesus, as the people of God, might pray right now. The first thing I would, would just say is that prayer is good and right and effective. James 5.16, the prayer of a righteous man has great power as it, it is working. Uh, has great power as it is working. We, we are beseeching the Lord on someone's behalf that his grace would come upon them. And, uh, and um, so I almost don't want to over-prescribe how to pray before I say pray. God's going to meet you in that. God's going to help you with that. The Holy Spirit speaks for us when we're not exactly sure what to pray. But just know that prayer is effective and, and, and it's somewhat mysterious. Um, I'd also say you have time to experiment here. Not everybody. Uh, you know, our, our house, now that we're doing at-home learning and I'm working from home and Martha's working from home, it's not like we just, we're kicking back. But um, but my guess is most of you have margin and uh, you might be able to try things in your prayer life that you've never really tried before. And you might connect with God in a way that you never have connected with God before. So I encourage that. that a couple things, some of you know this, that uh, the acronym of ACTS, A-C-T-S, the four uh, phases or kinds of prayer. A is for adoration, where we praise God for who he is. Uh, C is for confession, uh, just to confess the, the way that we have fallen short of his glory and the way that we have lived outside of his will. T is for thanksgiving, to thank God for the way that he's moved in our life and the way that he has blessed us uh, and for you know the things that he has done. And then supplication, that's asking for God to move, right? That's asking that he would provide. That's asking that he would change someone's heart. That's asking that God would do something on your behalf or on someone other, some other behalf. And that order is, uh, it's really important, right? It starts with the character of God. It goes back to 
our conversation about anxiety, right? It's about the character of God, who is God, and then all of the rest of our prayers are informed by who God is. Because when we confess to him, we recognize that he's holy and righteous and just, and that informs our confession. When we recognize that he is omnipotent and he is the giver and maker of all things, our thanksgiving is changed. And when we recognize that he has a will, and if we pray within that will, he's going to answer that prayer, that informs our supplication. I'd also ask you this, um, and I just had this thought, where is your heart breaking or where is your heart racing right now? Where is your heart breaking or where is your heart racing right now? We have the Spirit of God in us who quickens our hearts. And, uh, and the reason I think that's a great place for us to consider is because is God stirring us towards something or more importantly, is God turn, stirring us uh, to someone? Uh, my heart is breaking and racing right now. My dear friend, Sean, that I went to college with, an unbeliever texted me on Sunday at about 1215 and he had two sentences in the text and they were direct quotes from my sermon. And I texted him back and I said, this is either really random that you wrote those two sentences and just sent them to me, uh, or I'm thrilled that you uh, tuned into our sermon. And he texted me back and he said, well, I stopped in to just to get a flavor of what you do, uh, but I decided to stay for the whole thing. And uh, I don't know what God's up to, uh, but my heart races when I think about the idea that he would hear the gospel, that he would tune in in the time that we're uh, preaching and going through Isaiah 53. So what is God doing in your heart right now? Because that might inform what God wants you to pray about and might inform what God wants you to do, to move, to serve. Um, and, and here's, uh, so just, just, yeah, think about that. What's God um, stirring in your heart. I also just wanted to encourage you, this goes back to what we saw in Matthew 6. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And I know that right now, many of us, all of us need to be reminded that God cares for us, that he has not left us alone in this. And in his providence, he's allowed it to happen, but in his power, in his grace, he is going to meet us here and he will use this for his purposes, for our blessing, for our sanctification. Uh, to make the world more sensitive to him. And, um, and so, if, again, if you have those anxieties, part of that prayer of ACTS, you can confess those anxieties and say, Jesus, I know you told me not to be anxious about anything. I am, and I'm going to give these to you. I'm going to give you the uncertainty because I know that you're certain. Um, and I want to give you a challenge tonight. I want to give you a challenge that you would pray for one unbelieving friend for the next how many ever weeks uh, that we are uh, in lockdown. Uh, Acts 16, 14, Paul has just shown up in Philippi. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Thyatira and a seller of purple goods who was a worshiper of God. And then listen to this. The Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. I believe that God may be stirring in you to pray for someone specifically by name and to pray for an opportunity to share with them the hope that you have. And that's my challenge for you, is that you would just say, Lord, who is it? And would you give me the opportunity? God saves. God's the one who's going to work through you. We can just faithfully partner with him in that. And I think it's a fantastic time for us to be able to engage with other people and, that, and then be responsive. I, I wrote down uh, what would happen if after eight weeks you had a reputation for praying for people. How awesome would that be? That if someone had a need, they would know, I'm going to go to you. I'm gonna, I, I just know I get, I get comforted. You have good things to say and you pray for me. Uh, so just think about the ways in which uh, your prayer life can flourish in this time and, uh, and then continue to you know, send... Um, your prayer request to us so that we can pray for you. Uh, there, there is a, uh, I think there's an opportunity for a revival here. And I think that's a word that can get thrown around, but there is a sensitivity to God by those who don't know him. And I hope there's a sensitivity to God by those of us who do, who just recognize again that the world Jesus saved us from, the brokenness that Jesus has saved us from is still broken. And, uh, and we get to be the light in that very dark world. And so 
Um, uh, I'm just trying to see. Yeah, okay. Guess what? I think I got through it. I'm going to look at these comments real quick. Praying for you right now that Jesus will calm your anxieties. Amen. Um, thanks, Kurt, for leading. Sorry if my message distracts. Jenny, you never distract me, I promise. Um, hey, Cindy. Well, let me do this. Yeah, that's great. Uh, hey, Lori Harris. God bless you. Say hi to Thad and the kids. Um, Grinimus Reese, my kinds, what's up? Just trying to say T. Colin Coleman Hurtado. Now, that is a name. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, Evelyn. Mitzi, hey there. Hey, Allie. Hi, Susan. I wasn't planning on saying hello to everybody. I was just scrolling up. Hey, Trini, how are you? Uh, Corey, Teresa, Abigail. All right. Well, let me do this. I'm going to, um, I am, yeah, thanks, uh, Rico. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to, I want to just pray a benediction over you. There's a great close. Uh, that Paul, I think there's an awesome sermon series in the openings and closings of all of Paul's letters. It's just so rich uh, with theology and who God is and just his heart for uh, for the other people. And so I want to just pray a benediction over you and over our church and over our city and over this world. Second Thessalonians 3.16, now may the Lord of peace, shalom, all things are right. Everything is the way it should be. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Paul did not pray that that one day in eternity when all is said and done that we would have peace, that God would give us peace. He prays that they would know peace right now. And in Thessalonica, it was not very good. And because Paul says... I'm praying for peace for you right now. It means that you and I can have peace right now, even in the midst of all of this. And the more peace we experience, the more that we can turn around and offer that peace uh, to those who desperately need to know the peace and love and grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So guess what? I think we're done. I, I, that was 37 minutes, so a little bit less than five hours. Um, I, I want you to know I love you all. I am praying for you. I want to say thank you uh, for those who have emailed me and our team and just encouraged us as we've kind of rolled through this. Uh, our team is incredible. Uh, they have just made this happen over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, this isn't something that we got word on and, and it, it stayed the same for two weeks. This is a daily and hourly uh, moving target. And so I, I want to say thanks to our staff again and our elders and then all of you who are participating. Uh, we are going to go at 11 o'clock again this Sunday. Um, I, I will tell you all, I, I've thought, do I need to preach just on what's happening in the world or, or should I stay in the series? Uh, and by God's grace and providence, um, maybe the most incredible three verses in all of the Old Testament are what we're going to look at this Sunday. And they have a lot to say about what we are going through right now. So join us, share links, invite people to be part of uh, our experience on Sunday mornings. Uh, and we will get through this, not because we're going to bear down and make it happen, but because our God who loves us is with us and says, don't fear, I got this. So praise the Lord because he's got this and because he does, uh, we can have peace. Love you all. Uh, let's do this again. I hope to see you again uh, soon. Uh, I don't know how often we'll do it, but uh, I'd love to be able to dial this up again. So keep sending those questions in and we'll be able to get to them next time. God bless you all. Talk to you later. Bye. Yes, dinner's ready.